Hey, how's it going? Today I wanted to share with you a sad story, and it's about how I failed an interview one time because I didn't understand this concept in math. I believe this was an interview for a company called Naughty Dog. They're, uh, they're a Sony first-party studio based out of um, like the LA region, and they are best known for this game called The Last of Us, and they're very, they're very um, math-focused, the engineering department, I'd say. They're very strong in that, and so... Um, the, the, the years that I applied, and this was probably like two years ago, uh, prior to my current job, basically, um, it was always, it was always a pleasure to interview with them. I, I really enjoyed spending time with those guys just because I felt like I always came away from the interview learning something, <laughs> even if I did, uh, you know, not succeed, uh, and pass the interview, let's say. Um, but with that being said, let's figure out what, what did I do wrong? Okay. And here's the issue. In this little uh, demo I have set up for you, I've got the point E and the line segment CD. And what I'm trying to show is, or what I'm trying to calculate is the projection of E onto CD. On the bottom of my screen here, I'm showing the code to do that. And here we're referencing a function called my projection. This is just a very simple implementation of the standard uh, projection formula, right? It looks something like this. Basically, uh, a projection of A onto B is going to be in the direction of B with magnitude A dot B scaled by B, basically. Uh, but the reason why we normalize B is so that we don't have to do the scaling. So literally all you have to do is you normalize B, you take the dot product of A and B, and then you just scale B, which is pre currently scale of one, right? Because you normalized it. You just need to scale B then by that factor. And so that, that's kind of the basic dot product. That's how it works. Nothing too surprising there. But unfortunately, even though that is the vector projection formula, it doesn't result in the correct answer. So check it out. Point F is the projection of E onto CD. And as you can see here in this diagram, F is not on CD. That is no bueno, right? That's not good. If well, the, the correct answer that we're looking for is G, and I'm going to explain to you how I got there, but I thought what would be useful is to kind of just show some helper visuals. And the first is to realize that BD does not pass through the origin. Now, this vector projection formula, it works just fine as long as you're projecting onto things that don't have a position, right? So if you project a vector onto a vector, you don't need to do any more work. However, because a line segment does have position, you have to honor that because a position is just another way to say a translation from the origin. And what we have to do essentially is undo that translation in order for the vector projection to work correctly. So you can imagine, uh, so I'm not, I, I don't really show where the origin is on this diagram but it's basically down here, okay? So it's at the sort of the bottom corner right here. And so CD is translated a bit up and to the right, okay? You can imagine if you have the point at the start right here and you go up and to the right, that's how you got to C. And essentially what, this makes a lot of sense, right? Because F is on that line. So if CD did go through the origin, then F and G would be in the same position. However, um, well, here, I'll move it a little bit just so that E is kind of like down there. See, now they would kind of be on the same position. Uh, however, there's a problem there, right? And it's that the translation uh, needs to be somehow honored by F. And so the way that I'm doing it in the code here I've created an intermediary point N to kind of communicate what's happening. And what I've done is I've taken N and I have used it to subtract the translation represented by C, subtract that from E. So if I show you what N looks like, I think this is going to make a lot of sense. Basically, um, C is up. Let me get over here. here. C is kind of up and to the right. So what we need to do is we need to undo that translation. So what we need to do is we're gonna move C kind of left and down. And so that basically happens implicitly in the vector uh, in the in the vector projection. But we need to do it manually to E, okay? 
because E is the one that we are using to project. It's, it's automatically going to happen for whatever we're projecting onto, but we need to basically move E, I believe you would say, into the space of C, into kind of its perspective space. I think that might be one way to say it. I'm not sure though, so if you know in the comments, uh, help me out because I'm still you know learning the exact terminology here. But basically, if you would have to move C left and down, you can imagine that same translation being applied to E. So if we move E left and down, we would get N. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And now you can just imagine what would it look like if N is projected onto the line. And so that's what I'm doing with M. So M is the projection of N onto CD. Okay, and you can see it's still not on CD, but if you can, again, imagine this brown line here, if CD was at the origin, then you can see how it would now project kind of from N right onto M. So the first part was moving E. Okay, that's what N represents, Tra moving E to kind of offset the translation of C. That's what I'm showing here. The next step for M was doing the projection. This is this is our value for N, right? This is equivalent to N. And so essentially we did the projection of N onto CD. Then the last step, right? All of this is the same. This is N, or sorry, this is M, right? But we just need to undo our translation work there. Okay, so we're just gonna undo the work. And again, using our imagination, if we had to move E a little left and down to get to N, and then we projected it to get to M, undoing it would be moving it up and to the right, and that's exactly where G is. Okay, so basically, if you want to project a point onto a line segment or a point or a vector for that matter, onto anything that has a position, we have to first do is take the you know for any given point that you're projecting you need to undo the translation represented by the object you're project projecting onto so in the case here if you're projecting a point onto a line segment take one of the points on that line segment subtract it from the point you want to use for the projection complete the projection and then add that translation back onto the point okay and that whole algorithm it's not that complicated, it's just shown here, okay? Basically, we take E, we subtract the offset, and then we add the offset back. Okay, that's how it works. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if this helps you, or if you have any other questions, I would appreciate kind of testing my knowledge here, because I think this is something I'm still learning about, and, uh, and it excites me. I think it's an interesting problem.